Hey everybody, it's BC here and welcome to another episode of Station New Year's. Uh, I'm just getting ready to make some copper. It looks like we're actually out of copper. Uh, that kind of sucks. I want to make some alloys today. Uh, but we need to make, uh, we need to make Invar, we need to make Constantine because I have unlocked Amy. Uh, copper's not melting. I got to, oh wait, maybe the pressure's too high. Uh, yeah, we're going to make Amy. I did unlock it. Did all the research to get it unlocked. And I haven't actually used it. I haven't been able to find any information on the wiki about it. Uh, I got my temperature or pressure wrong. Let me check this for a sec. Sorry about that. I actually just just missed it. So let's go ahead and add this. Uh, I want to get some logics going today. Oh, that's not going to work. Hold on. That's right. Got to clear it. Which means I have to put a shoot on here too. We're going to do that by a junction on the other side. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, oh yeah, I want to get some uh, logistic logics going today. I want to try to get uh, some displays for these going. Uh, I, like, as I said, I did unlock Amy. I did the research for it. I haven't actually used it. I haven't found any information about this mining robot. Uh, but I have been doing some work over here. I have done a few strips. I did get some copper, but I went through it quite a bit because I want to make... Uh, a bunch of cables today but this is what i've done so far i've actually made three of them or three more and i had issues with uh them all funneling into the shoots i guess the shoots can only handle so much or just misalignment so having the, the junk the shoot dr connected directly to the the miner going into the shoots didn't seem to work too well so i tried using an inlet and the inlet d did sort of work but i had stuff bouncing out i'd let it go but do its thing, come back, and half the ores would be on the ground. I have to go all the way down here to pick them up, which apparently doesn't kill me, but uh, you never know. But this is the cavern we're leaving. I do have, like I said, I do have ideas for holes in the ground like this, and we'll get to them eventually. Uh, doesn't really do the best, but we'll see how this Amy does. I have a feeling we might have to get to the, uh, the IC programming to do that, and that might be an interesting one. We'll see. Uh, but uh, anyways, I was gonna get this going uh let's actually activate that see if that'll heat up no it won't uh i could do this in the arc first in fact i'll i will do that uh, i'll be right back okay i've got to go on through right now uh, but yeah so as you can see i do have amy unlocked uh can't really but hopefully you can see it uh it's a little bright i apologize for that maybe my light will help but we need five gold five copper 25 steel 15 electrum and then we need Seven Invar and eight Constantine. Invar is iron and nick iron and nickel. And I think that was yeah, that was supposed to be like uh over two thousand Kelvin temperature and over between six and seven megapat megapascals or six thousand kilopascals, we'll just say it's get easier since I don't know what it is. And then uh the Constantine was a little bit lower. It was between one hundred kilopascals and ten thousand kilopascals. Uh, but it had a specific temperature range of 1,000 and 1,500. So we'll have to get into that eventually. Uh, that's actually what I was wanted to do. I was going to get this set up because I want to, one, get a pressure pressure reading set up for it. Oh, this one stacked to five. What is that? Uh, I have been uh, sort of playing around with the circuits a little, little bit more, seeing what they can do, and uh, they're actually quite interesting. I had a couple set up over here amongst the mess in my disorganized base for now. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute too. It's uh, a floor design and I think I figured it out. But I have a few down here. So what I can do... Uh, oh yeah, this is um, an idea for the, the loaders. Uh, this is the logic switch here. There's different like levers and actual flip switches and there's a button. And the button is an activate signal. So I get that to read the button. And then re reads the activate signal that sends it over to the logic writer. And then when it reads that, I can have it send an activate signal to the vending machine. So I want to get that set up. I also want to get uh, displays for pressure and temperature. So I don't have to actually look at the, the gauge on the front of the machine. Uh, as far as spacing goes, I don't know. I'll probably have to put it here or... Uh, I can even put the pressure over there, it doesn't really matter, and then just, I can have the toggle buttons here and here. The problem is though, is I can't have them here, because we've got to have the wire, and so it's either going to be where that one is, or 
top and bottom, so I can't get sick. So uh, I'll probably take these two out, put buttons there for the oxide and volatile, and then I'll put the pressures over there. Uh, but I do have to make wires, and I gotta get the logic circuits printed. I did think they were gonna need a lot of gold, so I ended up mining like 400, 400 gold, and yeah, so we got a surplus. That's definite for sure. Copper, that's gonna be the issue. But anyways, I will take care of this, and I'll bring you right back. Okay, I'm back. So I'm thinking about, I was thinking about, I think I'm gonna actually put the circuits for uh, the vending machines all over here, so I've got these ones set up. Uh, I do have to patch them into the data port on there, so that's not going to be an issue. I can bring it over. All right, so I have these four here. I um, guess I could go over here in the back, try to conserve space. But I'm going to need two more readers, two more writers. Uh, okay, ends that way and ups that way, so I'm going to have them all the same. Two readers, two writers. What is that writer switch? I guess when you hit the switch, it writes to things. Possibly. I have no idea. So now I have do have some cable on me. This is not what I want to do. Uh, take that, put it over there, grab that. So I gotta wire these in. Um, let me actually do this off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am done. I also went through a lot of wire. I probably could have made this a little more efficient, but yeah, that's basically it. I do have everything labeled, so pressure there. And then, uh, probably should put the, this over here, but I got the volatile switch, and the oxide switch. Then we have, of course, the, the uh, counts there, and then down here I have the temperature. So everything is uh, all wired up. All I have to do is... First, take my jetpack off. Uh, I am aware I have to make more filters. I gotta start making the, the heavy ones eventually, or at least the mediums. Okay, let's take these off. I have to charge my drill. I gotta start making better batteries too. Uh, let's get that out of my hand. And we'll take these out. I hate how you have to actually click right on the frame. All right, and now I have one switch there. I do have another one over here. Let's grab this one. Get over the drill because I think that's what I need. Oh yeah, I got all these wires here and all this stuff too I can take. So I'll get to that eventually. Okay, so now we go here and yeah, I want a button. Ooh, a dial. I didn't know there was a dial. Uh, I don't like how you can't put this button there. That's fine, we'll do one there, one there, and then we will name that one. Nope, oh, that's not what I want to do, I actually want to turn it on. And we'll name this Volatile. Oops. Volatile. Oxide. Jeez, you remember, remember the, back in the days when you couldn't actually use like home and end and uh, in text boxes and games. Anyway, uh, so that is that. So everything is done. All I have to do is wire up these switches. Okay, where are they here? Okay. That'll be a relatively simple patch job, to be honest. Do that and that. Yeah. Just like so. We'll flip that around. Um. C. And C. So now that should be everything. I just gotta quickly configure everything. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of stuff on here now because of what I've got. Oh wait, no, no, no. Uh, this is connected but highly unnecessary. That will take take. Uh, that was patched right into here. I can use the wire back anyways. All right, uh, give me a corner, please. Do that, and then we will stand you up and put it straight in there. Bam. So now everything should be connected and working. So here we go. Uh, this is pressure, so we want furnace eventually. Stacker. Oh, that's actually. Hold C and go the other way. 
and get me the quicker console furnace okay and then we we're gonna be reading this was pressure that's kind of weird how it goes reverse order so pressure okay so then we see we want pressure logic reader and you get the idea so where is it pressure logic reader okay and then then what do we want I never put the displays up I gotta do that and done so I went here and then pressure temperature and all I have to do is just have it, this output to the display we could probably get a, a real-time update on this Okay, let's see. No, we don't use that. Okay, so this was going to be outputting to. Uh, we we're going to output this to pressure. All right, so I'll probably hold. Oh, let's go the other way. Click through here. This is also why you don't want to have too many things on the same grid, we'll call it. Uh, pressure regulator. Oh, no. I think that's it. Setting. Turn that on, turn that on, and... There we go. So that is the pressure, and it is in... Kilopascals. I probably should have a wider display for that, but that's fine. Uh, as long as I can actually display 10,000. I'm wondering, I guess it will because of the decimal. Okay, then I do the same thing for the temperature, and it shows the temperature, and that would be in Kelvin. So that makes it so much easier, so I don't have to keep trying to look at that display all the time. Uh, eventually, I will be moving all this stuff upstairs. Uh, there's going to be a second floor, and that's what that grating is going to get into. Uh, I will have to move the junction box, the chutes around, and go from there. So now all that's left to do is to set up these buttons. Now this should be relatively simple we go here and see i have these just set to yeah volatile button uh, let's see here and it should be volatile button okay and we read an activate signal and we go here and we go that to vol volatile switch logic reader and that is going to output to Two volatiles. Hmm. Uh, I guess we should rename this. So it always comes in handy to rename your stuff when you build it. Volatile vendor. Okay, let's see if it shows up now. Oh, give me that, give me that, give me that. I'm sure I can afford another one, but I don't want to bother. Okay, and let's see here. Volatile vendor, okay. We we'll do that and we will give it an activate signal. So this should work. Let's give it a test. Okay. So I have 86 volatile. We activate that. And it's not activating. Why not? Hmm. Got him hooked in. Uh, I might have done something wrong here. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. So I did some uh, digging around. Apparently, the the activate feature on the vending machine isn't actually enabled right now. Uh, game is in development, so kind of expected. You guys can sort of see it below my avatar in the corner there. Development build. Uh, so I have to manually do that, but that's fine because I actually want to get this stuff into tanks and properly mixed and then have a gas feed instead of item feed. Uh, it poses a bit of a problem over here though, because that means I have to reconfigure these. Now, I won't be able to actually do this, do what I wanted to do. I wanted to have all the controls upstairs so I could just automatically operate the furnace and the vending machines from the second floor, but that's not going to work because 
It does involve IC scripting and I don't want to go there. I really don't want to go there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch things over. I'm going to leave these vending machines down here. I'm going to leave them all set up at the sort of line. But what I'm going to do is remove all the chutes. And then I'm going to take is move the vending machines forward and rename them. That way so I don't forget where they are. I'm going to leave the chutes where they are. And then what I'm going to do is pull out all the floor panels all the way up to the furnace. So I can actually go ahead and start laying chutes underneath. And that way I can have a walkway in here so I can go through and uh, hit the buttons as I need. Now I do know that chutes can go down. Uh, is it not going to go there because of the wire? I think so. Let's uh, find it. Uh, actually. Uh, yeah, I had this all timed out and now I'm messing it up. But I think this will be it. I think that's what it is. Yes. So then once I have this going down, I'm going to have all these machines hooked up into a bit of a network that will lead underneath the floors that we can place back afterwards and run all the way to the furnace. And I did uh, just reconfigure this for now uh, once we get this into tanks and pressurize and gas fuel and all that stuff. Then we can take this junction out and just put it straight in. Uh, this just happens to be above the floor level, so that means we can fill that in. Not a problem. Uh, wires, I'm not too worried about the, the cladding if I plate them or the. Yeah, the cladding, if I place that down, then it covers up the the floors, so it's not too bad. Uh, everything is wired in. All that's left to do is to put the floor back in. And that's one thing I like about the the conveyors and the wires and all that stuff, is they can actually go through the floors. You just gotta place them in there first. So if we go like so, and weld one, weld two. Really? What happened? Oh! Oh! That's interesting. I did not know that. You can actually fry the wires with the, the welding torch. Cool. Anyway, I got uh, some floors to replace and I'll be back. Okay, it is done. Now, another thing I want to do too is there's actually something called an unloader. Now, I can't remember if it was a chute design or not. I think I'm going to actually have to make a kit for it. Basically, what the unloader does is you put, the, put your mining belt in. They'll unload the belt and then spit out the belt. So... This is a kit I have to make, so let me go make that and I'll bring you back. Okay, so it is apparently a stacker. So we'll take the, take the unloader, like the inventory space, and let's see, so we have a stacker and we have an unloader. Uh, unloader, like I said, you put a belt in, it'll automatically unload everything. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to run an unloader through a stacker, not stacker, a sorter, so it unloads the ores and just spits the belt out to a chute. And of course it's going to go into there. Now where do I want to have this set up? Uh, well, I got the vending machines here, so I might as well put it right here. The unloader, yeah, we'll this in here. Then I'll grab the grab the sorter, and I'll get this all set up. Okay, so I got it all set up. So actually, the only thing I have to do is hook up power. I do need to get some wires, so let me do that. Okay, I'm back. I got the wires in here. I forgot I had some wires over here, but I noticed that. I have no idea when that happened. Uh, I know these pipes are supposed to burst at a really high temperature or pressure. So I don't know what I did here. Maybe I think I got it backwards. Maybe I should have the regulator before the pump because the pump's just going to keep on pumping. If I have the regulator, it's only going to allow so much through. But yeah, that could be the case. Uh, what I wanted to do is I actually got this hooked up. I want to see how much power, how much we actually have in here. Do I have a console somewhere? I should. Yes, we do. Uh, actually, I need those cables too. Uh, yeah, we're out of copper again. So I gotta do some mining, but I do have this thing ready to go. Uh, let's just see how much we have in here. Now, uh, again, with the logic stuff, it's all relatively straightforward. Actually, that's... It's straightforward if you use, uh, use the right display if you're tr that you're trying to use. That's a slow drill. Okay, let's go just because let's go for the large display. Let's see what kind of information this will give us. Alright, so we go here, we put this on. I do have everything powered. Oh. Uh, wire cutters might help. Okay, then we go down here, we'll do the old switch roo. What's this called? Probably just a tank, right? Small tank. Right. We only have one small tank, so that's all we're, we're going to worry about. 
change this to small tank. Small tank. And we are going to read... Should be volume in here. Quantity. That works. And logic test reader, yes. And this is going to be... Outputting to... What's it called? Probably oh, display large. And we'll hold Alt or C and we'll go the other way. LED display large and we're gonna uh, setting. Alright, let's see how much we have in here. Turn that on, turn that on. And of course, turn that on. We got 2700 liters. So it's not that it's full, it's we're just having pressure issues. So I think that's what I gotta do is I gotta switch these two around. Uh, for the time being, I'll deal with that off camera because that's not what we're doing today. Today, what we're doing is we're actually going to be getting this thing set up. Probably don't need the wire cutters, but I'm going to pull them out anyways because you know me. I'm going to place the raw wire in the wrong spot. Uh, the only thing I have left to do is set up the white list on the sorter for the mining belt. And uh, I might add my uh, mining, mining drill in there too, just in case I've got to take it out. Uh, where are you? There you are. Now is data on this side? Yes. Okay, so I already have named that to belt sorter. And that should be at the top of the list. Would be if I turned it on. And beautiful thing is, it's alphabetical. Ice, cobalt, coal, it should be in here. Hmm. I wonder if it's one of those things. I'll oh, find it. Give me a sec. I found it. It was right here. I was, was looking at the icons. I didn't realize the drop down menu wasn't going to be there until I actually add the whitelist. So now we can go down here. We can go up to a whitelist. We're going to go down to. Well, we're going to go all the way down to ore, and I can't remember where that was. Uh, no, actually, we want mining belt. That's going to be right at the bottom. And where are you, marine? Marine armor, I had no idea about that. Okay, mining belt, so uh, that basically means if my mining belt goes through, it comes back out to shoot. So let's give it a test. I do have a mining belt on me. Uh, that's the wrong button. There we go. Alright, so all I should have to do is just drop it right in here, sucks it in, and spits it out the other end. And I forgot my drill. <laughs> Oops. Oh, let's turn it on. Oh, I had ice in there. I forgot. Now, there's my belt. Unfortunately, my drill's somewhere in the system. Actually, that would have went right out the end. That's right. No, actually, it's in the vending machine. Thank you. Alright, so that works. Uh, I am going to see if I can add my drill onto that too. <laughs> Just in case, because I know I'm going to forget. I'm going to do that quite a bit. Oh, uh, yes, you can. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to add the drill and the heavy drill, and I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, so I've got uh, I've got the drills, both drills whitelisted. I also went and put it... Uh, inlet chute onto the furnace in case I ever decide to, you know, cook something and realize it's not up to pressure or temperature, then I can dump it, but at least I have it there. So what I want to do next is, I actually want to do this, uh, give this little mine, uh, unloaders set up a test. I'm sorry, I'm having one of those days. Uh, yeah, uh, but I actually do need some copper because I want to get, uh, as you can see, I got more chips than I need, but I do want to get displays set up for these, and I'm probably probably have them up on this wall here just so I have an idea of what I have and I'm going to use a labeler and when I label the display like I've got this one that says pressure and this one that says temperature I'll have for instance iron and it's melting temperature and it's uh, pressure for the, the furnace so that way I can look at it and say okay well the iron needs 373 or actually the iron needs like 900 I think Kelvin and Whatever, 2,000 kilopascals. But anyway, uh, I'm going to do some mining and we'll give this thing a test and see how it works out. 
Okay, I'm back. So I just use mine, get some copper. As you can see, I got a couple of stacks of wire on me, and I have another stack being printed. Uh, unfortunately, that's the end of my copper. So we're gonna have to mess around with Amy next episode. Uh, but what I, I've been thinking about where I wanted to set these up. Now, realistically, I could set them up on the floor and just put f cladding down um, over top, but then that doesn't leave me much room if I ever want to run wires underneath the floor for whatever reason. So I'm just going to put them on the outside here. We can always uh, put some cladding over top to hide them. All right, so let's get some light going. So it's going to be 10 sets because we have 10 different things. We got uh, all the way from iron all the way to uranium uh also too uh regarding the color um i like on the, the display there now apparently um when i change the color uh what it does is it takes the input value into the reader into the, the writer and depending on the value anywhere from 0 to 11 it'll adjust the color anything over 11 it'll create the purple that you saw so i could actually set something up like that using using a, a vending machine and filling a certain number of stacks and setting color with that with it that way but that's if I want to do it that way so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm actually gonna have the writers on top of the readers so I'm gonna have the reader there reader there reader there all the way along and ten writers at the bottom like so now to create a massive wire network so I'm gonna be using the four-way junctions on this and I'm gonna join everything up well I won't use a four-way there because there's no input on the bottom so let me do that and I will be back all right so they're all wired up ready to go uh, next I gotta do is uh, go on to this side here and, and I guess this is what I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my, uh, my displays hmm I wonder where I should have that. Theoretically, I should have it here. And I think I'll do that. So let me grab some walls and put some LED signs up. Okay, so I got everything wired up. I had to make sure that I got it onto this side here because I believe that this, all this here is on a completely separate transformer than here. It's going to patch into here, but I realized, realized I probably wouldn't be able to connect because of the transformer and I wasn't actually seeing those vending machines when I was setting up those circuits. Anyway, so now the fun task of playing with the screwdriver for 20 minutes while I adjust everything. That's going to be basically the same thing. We're going to go here. We got that. I actually, yeah, I got most of the displays named. So Iron Logic Reader, this is going to be, this is going to be Iron Vending Machine. Once I get there, now you can see everything that's on here. And I'm just going to do the first one. So Iron Vending Machine. Iron vending machine, and we are going to be reading. Uh, where is it? There is a quantity. Then we go over here. Set this to iron in, iron logic writer. No, we don't. <laughs> Our logic reader, we do that down here. I forgot I got them all set up on top of each other now. And of course, the reader's only gonna, writer's only going to read the readers. So Iron Logic Reader, okay, and then output is going to be, uh, where is it? It is coming, yes, you can see the displays, I'll show you that in a second, and that is the display. And then of course we are going to be playing setting, I'm not going to turn any of them on because I don't want the, the colors to change on me, I'll probably end up painting them with the spray cans, I don't know. But anyways, so yeah, everything was more or less the same. There's a few that were different. It's really the alloys that things get a little different. But just so I know, iron's 900 Kelvin minimum pressure. Anything over 100 kilopascals. Copper 600. Gold is 600. Silver 600. Silicon 600. Uh, uranium nothing. Coal nothing. Cobalt you can't actually cook in the furnace. You have to make alloys with it, like the astralloy and the hastalloy and the other one that doesn't actually get used in the game yet. Then we got the nickel at 800 and the lead at 300. And this just gives me an idea how many stacks I have in the machine. I know there'll be full stacks because I'm running through this sorter as I had, or the stack as I had mentioned. So now I'm going to get this wired up and I'll bring you back when it's all done. Okay, I'm back. I decided to go around, like I said, do a little bit of mining and see if I can find anything. Uh, 
didn't really find too much, as you can tell, but it, uh, it doesn't matter because uh, we're next episode. We're, next episode, we're gonna work on getting Amy up and running. So what I'm gonna do is actually I've got to turn all these circuits on. Always the the fun part. Always just a little green button you gotta hit. Or in this case, a little red button. So I gotta turn these on. Okay, all the circuits are on. So all we gotta do now is just turn these on. And this should give us a display. So we have one stack of copper. Zero, 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 zero percent. I gotta go check that one. I think I set it to a ratio. Or something. What was that? That was... Silver? I think so. It was the fourth one. Which wouldn't have been cobalt. It would have been... I think I put silver there. I can't remember. Silver, yes. Yeah, I'm just curious what the the settings are. So let's see here. Silver is silicon coal. Silver. Okay, we are outputting mode. Yeah, that explains it. Got my screwdriver. And we want I just changed the color of it. White now. So what did I change it to? Uh, I'm getting all mi mixed up here. It's quantity, yes. Okay, I gotta check this, hang on. And with the rising of the morning sun and the floating light above me, I forgot to take down. I am done. It did all work out. I actually had to take down the actually take this the display down and place it back up because it was still stuck on the the 100% and white. So that is good. So as you can see, we have one iron, one stack of iron, one stack of silver, one stack of nickel, and two stacks of coal. We're rich. No, we're not. But. At least for setup, so I can go ahead and I can uh, yeah. go ahead and dump that in there. That'll do its thing, and I'll spit my drill back out to me and my tool bag. Wait for it. Wait for it. And there it is. So that worked. So now the question is. It did. did. It all updated, so we had. Two stacks of iron there, or a stack of iron, stack of nickel, stack of coal, and a stack of silicon. So that is all working perfect. Only thing we need to do is get some better mining going, because I'll be quite honest, that thing is a bit of a pain in the ass to move. Yeah, it gets going for about 10 minutes to get some stuff, but it's not really worth it. And you know, I know I do realize there are areas, like the reason why I had to move it is because this section over here was somewhat empty. I was using the ground penetrating radar to figure out where the hot zones were and there was a hot zone here so I moved it over. But now I think we're starting to get to some dry land. I don't know. Hopefully hopefully Amy has a few tricks up her sleeve that can really help us out. We'll figure that one out in the next episode because we gotta get the furnace more automated. Uh, get, it. get the ice that's going through the system actually going into I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have it piping down into a room down below. Now it's going to have an outlet on the chute. It's going to drop the ice in here. I have no idea how far down I need to go. I know I can't go. I shouldn't go too far because I know the stuff we're pumping down here is technically hydrogen and it can explode. And I have heard stories of things like tanks exploding. That ruptured pipe was just a... was nothing compared to what can happen. But yeah, so we'll have to get some tanks. Probably get some tank storage up over here. I'll probably fill the pad up a little bit. And then... Uh, then we'll probably just have a pipes running through the floors like we did with the the chutes and all that stuff. And that way we can start making alloys a little bit better. I'm also going to look around too, see if there's any sort of sign or something that we can put up so I, you know, I can have recipes for said uh, alloys like Constantin and Nickel. Not Nickel. Uh, Invar. Yes, Invar. The stuff we don't use very often. i got to watch out. I left a hole there. I just thought I'd show you what I did with the, the wiring on the back of the displays because they, they're all labeled. I don't have to worry about finding them in the network, so it just 
daisy chain them all together have it hooked up into the system which is going into here which is going over there and i have absolutely no idea how much power i still have left in this transformer because it doesn't actually tell you it tells you what your maximum limit is i can go up about 100 more i've already had to gone up like 500 but uh i believe the vending machine's only like five watts so that's not bad i think the stackers stackers might use a little more power same with the the computers and the miner i'm sure is quite hefty on the juice usage but anyways, I think we're going to call this one here. I know we're running a little long. I know I've been pretty busy and resource intensive. That's all I can say. But yeah, next one we'll get some proper gas storage going. Get better automation with that going. I, I know I can't use the activate buttons on the, the vending machines. But I can certainly pump gas in there, right? Anyways, uh, thank you all so much for watching. hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave me a like. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Later.